right, now we're going to talk about a uniqueness proof. And up to this point, you've probably been in college algebra, maybe calculus or trig, but you have solved a lot of equations. So this equation is a linear equation. So all we're trying to say is that with a linear equation that's in this specific uh, setup where a is non-zero and there's no other um, terms involving x has a unique solution. So not only do we want to show that the solution is unique, but we also want to show that it exists. So we have two steps to this process. So I, what I'd recommend doing at this time is go back to page 99 of one section 1.8 and read through the section on uniqueness proofs. I think that'll kind of help you understand as I work through this example a little bit more. And also um, example 13 is super helpful. What example 13 goes through and does is shows that there exists a unique R such that a times r plus b is equal to zero. So this is super similar, except instead of zero, we have c. So nothing crazy there, um, just stepping it up slightly. So hopefully it works. <laughs> um, so let me just do a sketch of you know these these different parts of our proof that we said we needed to do. It is a real number x such that if I choose any real number a, b, and c, as long as a is non-zero, I'll have that a times x plus b equals c. So first we want to show that that is true, that there is such an x value that satisfies that. Now it won't be too hard to do. What we'll do is just solve that equation for x and show that that real number exists. Um, the other piece that we need to do is the uniqueness. So we want to show there exists a unique, okay? So that's there exists unique okay there exists unique okay so our regular you know a little backwards either but now we're adding that exclamation point to state that it's a unique x value um, so we can find a unique solution to this linear equation okay all right for the existence part <clears throat> We're just going to go through and solve for x and find a way to represent that solution. So let's see, we're trying to solve this equation for c and this condition here will be important for us. So if I want to solve it for x here, I'm going to start by subtracting b from both sides and then I'll have ax is equal to c minus b. And here's where we, it's important that we know that a is non-zero because if a weren't non-zero, then this would not be a real number. But since we know a is non-zero, we know that this quotient is clearly defined and will be a real number. So we'll need this expression, right? We won't really show this part. What we'll show actually is say, okay, note that this is a solution. And then you'll say it's a solution because it satisfies this equation, right? Is equal to C minus B plus B is equal to C, right? So it satisfies the equation. It makes it a true equation, right? Um, so this is the part that we'll show, right? This is background work to figure out what we know about the solution. So that's our first part, our existence part. Okay, we've shown that it will exist. And again, this is just a sketch draft before we dive into the actual nice work up here. Okay, now we want to show that it's unique. So typically when you're trying to show that you have a unique solution, you uh, use a proof by contradiction because you say, okay, well, suppose that there are two solutions and then you derive a contradiction from that. So that's what we'll try here. So let's suppose that there exists x1, x2, and our real numbers such that ax plus b, ax1 plus b equals c, and ax2 plus b equals c. And what we're going to do is we're going to see that, um, oh, make sure you also include this additional restriction that x1 is not the same as x2, right? Because we're trying to show that there are more than one um, 
solution to this, but we'll find a contradiction to this statement here when we combine these two equations, okay? So we're trying to prove uniqueness. We're trying to prove that there is just one real number x that satisfies this equation. So to do that, we're doing a proof by contradiction. So we're assuming that there's two unique solutions. So um, they're not equal to each other, okay? And then we're gonna derive a, a contradiction to the fact that they're not the same. So what I'm gonna do, if I know that ax plus b is equal to c, and I know that ax2 plus b equals c, well, since they're both equal to c, then they must be equal to each other, right? So I can set them equal to, do, to each other. Since c equals c, ax1 plus b must equal ax2 plus b. Then if we subtract b from both sides, ax1 equals ax2, and um, I know that, um, sorry guys, I know that a is non-zero, so it's okay for me to go ahead and divide both sides by a. I have an equation, so as long as I'm doing something to both sides of my equation, I'm good. a divided by a is 1, a divided by a is 1, and I get x1 is equal to x2, which contradicts our assumption up here that they were not equal to each other. So let's go ahead and write this up. So we've shown that the solution exists and that it satisfies that equation, and we'll have shown that it's unique by the second portion. So let's write it up pretty and take our sketch to the next level here. Okay, so I'm gonna let my reader know that I'm starting my proof, and for my final draft here, you wanna pay attention to this portion. All right, so I wanna set it up, make sure that all my variables are clearly defined. So I'm gonna say let A, B, C, be real numbers where a is non-zero. Okay. Now remember, we don't know anything about x yet, so it doesn't really make sense to try to declare um, anything about about x right now. So. Uh, let's start with our existence portion. So let's just say, um, let's kind of square it off here. So first, note the real number oh, let's see, what was that real number that satisfied our equation? C minus B over A. C minus B over A uh, you know, let's let's add a little bit of more work to this. So let's say x equals um, just so that we can use that x later, and they can see where I'm coming from a little bit more. So is a solution a x plus b equals c? because now our algebra comes into play. Uh, a times my x, right? C minus b over a plus b is equal to, we're just gonna jump in c. Okay. So consequently, a real number x exists for which ax plus b equals c. Okay, so that's our existence portion of our proof. Now we'll think about the uniqueness portion of the proof. Okay, so now we know that such a real number exists, but now we need to show that this is the only one. Okay, so next Suppose that x1 and x2 are real numbers such that 
a times x1 plus b is equal to c and a x1 plus b equals c. Then a x1 plus b. Oh crap, make sure that we say, um, suppose that x1 are real numbers such that ax1 plus b equals c and ax1, crap, ax2 plus b equals c. And, right, we'll add in this additional constraint that x1 is not equal to x2, okay? Because that's where a contradiction is going to be. All right, then if they're both equal to c, right, we can set them equal to each other. AX1 plus B is equal to AX2 plus B. AX1 is equal to AX2 and X1 is equal to X2. This contradicts our assumption that x1 is not equal to x2. Then, thus, there exists a unique real number x such that ax plus b is equal to c when a, b, c are real numbers and a is non-zero. So I see here the book went slightly different uh, on that uniqueness part, but it's the same idea, okay? It's written up slightly different. So see if you can figure that example and understand this portion. Just make sure you don't forget about the existence portion, okay? So not only do we need to show it's, a, it's unique, but we also need to show it exists.